The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, first of all, I want to make a comment. Um, the folks in the chat room are talking about the um, uh, registration of Tesla vehicles in Hong Kong. And, uh, folks, up until January, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you buy a, a car in Hong Kong, you pay 100% tariff. So if you buy a $90,000 Mercedes, you pay $180,000 for it. And believe me, the insurance over there is in unbelievable. And the parking is even more unbelievable than the insurance and the tax. Uh, there have been parking places that sell for half a million dollars. That's a parking place, folks. That's without plumbing. And uh, so anyway, during the, the first introduction of Tesla, um, Musk was able to uh, convince the Hong Kong folks to uh, reduce the uh, tariff so that the air would be cleaner in Hong Kong. So if you bought a, a Tesla, you only paid the regular price. You didn't pay. You were buying at 50% discount. So if you go to if you go to Hong Kong, you're going to see more Teslas than you do uh, Hondas or Toyotas. I mean, it's it's really amazing. We we were riding on the bus. Uh, last March, and I think we counted 56 in a three-block radius. I haven't seen 56 Teslas since they came out, so uh, it's really uh, ready to go. Folks, uh, if you remember, uh, we, we're putting the chart here of the DAX. That's what we'll start out here with the daily, but if you remember uh, on our show Thursday and Friday, I was referring to the fact that if we were down today in the stock market and down big, uh, we're going down really hard into August the 14th. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, that tell us that that could be happening. Now, we'll be looking here at the DAX index here on a four-hour. We looked at it on the daily, and we want to be able to see this. And you'll be able to see <clears throat> what we're looking at here is a possibility of a breakdown. But all we really need to do is to get it started, is to be down today. I'd, if Ideally, you'd like to see the Dow down about uh, three digits, if possible. The more it's down, the more bearish it is. That's uh, pretty much the bottom line. And, of course, we had our good friend uh, Bill Meridian on. Uh, last uh, uh, Wednesday, and of course, Norm Winsky on Thursday, but Bill shared with us this chart uh, of his cycles. And as you can see, you know, they're due to be topping right now. And this is a combination of all cycles in the years that end in seven. And he has some really good work. So keep, keep an eye on that, along with the fact that we have the, the Bradley model is also doing, telling us pretty much the same thing because we should be topping here. You know, and that's what it looks like. And if it's correct, then this looks like it might be headed down. That's all uh, All I know. Um, one of the questions that I got over the weekend was, uh, you know, how can, uh, you know, a Tesla go down with the fact that all, the, you know, that, you know, that's been going straight up and all the news is so good. Well, the news isn't always so good. I mean, when it turned, there was no news there. And that's what happens. The news follows the trend, folks. And uh, if you want to, if you don't believe that, just take a look at what's going on in the soybean market. By the way, I will have Rich Anderson on today of Anderson Capital Management on at the break to discuss this weather market that we've got, got going on in wheat, corn, and soybeans. And uh, he'll give us a good idea uh, of that. One of the things that Rich does uh, that, that really helps me is he posts these things uh, from some of these high-priced um, weather services that, that are out there. This is one that we got Sunday night that alerted us to the fact that beans, wheat, and corn were going to be a great deal higher. Well, they were uh, they were indeed a great deal higher. The soybeans ended up being uh, 20 cents higher. Uh, wheat was uh, 15 cents higher, and I think corn was uh, 9 cents higher. So all of these things are, are you know, figured in uh, to that. Oh, that reminds me, I've got to get, um, I've got to get, 
uh, Simon only on again this week. Uh, we're going to do my best to get him on this week. He's the big hedger um, from Chicago that was that was Richard was his first job. But we'll get him on. He's he really is good and and he's got some, you know, really good you know information on what's happening with the crop, which will really really be fun. Okay, let's move back to uh, some of these markets because we've only got to be able to uh, cover just a few of these. Um, okay, I'm sorry about that. I only do it that one time. That is a paid. That is a paid service, folks. And uh, I only posted it the only time that I posted it, just to show you what it is. That's just a fraction of it. I think there's 14 pages on that. That's just the introductory page that gives you the uh, opening calls, you know, for uh, for Sunday night. So I was just showing you that some of the things that are available out there. Okay, let's move on here to. Um, one other thing that we want to keep an eye on uh, this morning, and that is the uh, euro. Uh, the euro has also gone up and tested, tested this level of um, 114.20 one more time. We did that again last night. Um, we, are, we are due for a pretty good correction here in the euro. That means a rally in the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar has found some support at the 96 level. But as we know, you know, if it goes below, um, you know, 94.50 in the U.S. dollar, this would mean that the euro is most probably going to be going out to the uh, area of uh, 117 very easily. And it could still be a bear market rally. But as we've seen before, this euro has had tremendous bear market rallies all the time. I mean, it's had a swing. I don't know if you know this, but the euro started in 99, I believe, at uh, 135. It went to 85. Then it went to 160, came back to 85, went back to 160, and then back to about, I think, one. 104 or something like that. So it's been all over the map. And that's why it's one of the best trading vehicles we've ever had, because it's it's really, uh, really exciting to uh, to take a look at it. Now, when we were looking at that DAX chart, I wanted to show you one of what, what I feel is one of the most bearish charts that we have going here. And that is the uh, NASDAQ chart. Uh, if you'll notice here, you'll be able to uh, see uh, what you're looking at here is that the NASDAQ is making an ABCD rally uh, over the last uh, five trading days. It's coming in at a 382 retracement. Uh, that number was uh, 5681, uh, I believe, and we hit 5684 last night. So I don't know if that's going to mean the end of that ABCD, but at least it sets up um, just absolutely uh, perfectly. And uh, Many times, you know, you're going to see some of these things look very interesting. As a matter of fact, let me just show you what that pattern looks like in soybeans before we went down into – no, that did not negate it at all because um, the number was 56.82 and we went to 56.85 on a – on a quick tick. So no, that doesn't mean anything. And the rest of the markets weren't even moving at all. So I don't believe that means anything, Mr. P, but I'm not sure. But the, the pattern for the ABCD was just flat on absolutely perfectly. The 382 was violated by, I think, four points. And when you're talking about something that's at 5685, four points is not very much. Okay, let's take a quick look here um, at this next chart, which is the um, this is the uh, July soybean chart, and I wanted to show you this ABCD pattern because this is the same pattern that we're looking at in the NASDAQ. It's, it's exactly the same where you have this ABCD at the 382. Okay, we'll be right back after these few words from our sponsors. John Logan has been hard at work making the Taz Profile Scanner Plus the best it can be, and he'll be hosting a special hour-long webinar for all Taz Profile Scanner Plus subscribers this Wednesday, July 12th from 5 till 6 p.m. Eastern. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to this amazing piece of software. See for yourself how it tracks 5,000 financial instruments in real time, over 17 different stock exchanges, U.S. futures, and currencies. This piece of software will change the way you trade, and it 
it can be used with any trading methodology. The combination of price and volume is what makes market profile-based analysis so unique. We've opened up a 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus, even if you've had a trial before. So now is a great time to sign up. You also gain access to John's July 12th webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile Unique. Sign up for your free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner Plus right now on the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to talk a little bit about gold and silver because uh, we have some big patterns that could be uh, in play here. Uh, the first one that I'm looking at here is a, a chart for silver going back uh, 13 years, back to the 2004 low. As you can see, it has touched this uh, trend line uh, four times now. Um, that came in tonight uh, at uh, 15 uh, uh, 22, I believe, and that was the the lowest 1518, I believe. Now, folks, uh, some of your your charting services are showing that silver got below 15 dollars an ounce, and that is not uh, that is not the case. Um, uh, from what Jim Twentyman, who supplies my data through CQG, and nobody's better than this than he is, uh, says that it was done by al algorithmic trading, and evidently some of those trades uh, didn't have any counterparty on the other side of it, uh, and so. Uh, they were disallowed. Now, that's what he told me. Maybe the exchange will be different, but CQG is showing that low uh, last night coming in at, uh, you know, 1518. And some of the services are showing 1465, which is uh, not a good uh, not a good price from what Jim told me. I could be wrong, and he could be wrong, but he's not wrong very often. So uh, if it does change, I'll certainly uh, certainly let you know. Now, uh, watch this silver and gold. You know, that's the silver, but if we take the gold market, uh, what we want to do here and look at this gold, let's get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. And uh, if you'll look at this just from a cycle um cycle move here, you'll notice that uh, we are uh, very, very close to a 142-day uh, cycle. That goes back, uh, you know, quite a ways back into last year's low, and you notice that it came in on uh, June the 30th. What's important is that break into June 30th was $107 per ounce from the last high. And if you go to where we are right now, 
the $107 down to the net, to the next high would take us down to 11.95. Now right now we're trading at 12.10, so we're still, you know, $15. Let's see, see, 10, 5. Yeah, we're $15 away from that, but that's a heartbeat uh, in core, in uh, gold. So watch that 15. Wow. 11.95 level in the gold. It's going to be interesting. There's a 0.618 retracement there. It's $107 down from the high, which happens to be three harmonics of 34. And also, it will be looking at a 1.27 expansion of the low that we had back in May. One other factor that I think that we should be um, that we should be looking at. You're correct. We are seeing an ABCD pattern in the silver. Uh, on the downside on a daily basis and I'll bring this up so you folks can take a quick look at it good eye that sounds pretty good we'll put this up here thank you Marshall for reminding me and this is the weekly chart on silver showing you that same line but the other one went back to 2004 and that's why we're that's why we're setting here at such a very very interesting spot you know to take a, a look at some of these things that we're that we're looking at. So let's take one look at one other thing that I think is important for this, and that is the fact of the um, the gold uh, silver index XAU. And if we take a quick look at this, you'll notice that um, this is a daily chart. You know, going back over the last nine months, uh, the yellow line that you see there is the gold chart. That's a spot chart. You can see we have higher bottoms through here. Uh, with the exception of the one that we just took out in May. But the other one, you notice that we made a triple bottom at the 78% level. That could be very, very interesting, folks, because we took out all the lows from March. We took out all the lows from May. And if we don't if we don't collapse from here, this this sets up a very good, um, uh, I don't know what the TAS profile would look at, but I would imagine John would have something pretty interesting on that TAS profile around that 7750 level. With, without any question, you wouldn't have to risk more than $2, you know, to be long gold at this spot. So I'm waiting for the 1195 level to see if that uh, gets down to that level. The second situation is if this is the bottom in gold, and I'm not sure that it is the full moon might mean something May, might not i don't know but if i'm wrong on the gold and the bottom doesn't come in at 11.95 what i will do is i'll start looking at my 30 minute charts and look for the first abcd pattern that will come in you know to form a little gartley off of this last low that we had at 1203 and so that's that's a strategy that i'm looking at i'm not going to you know buy it today i would have loved to have bought it today at 11.95 but we didn't get that pro didn't get that thing and i don't like to trade uh, silver anymore because it gets too darn um, erratic as we saw just recently so i am watching the the gold very very closely uh from this level so uh, that's another one the, the other one that looks very similar to the xau is the gold bug index and it actually looks even a little bit better and if you'll give me here one second, we'll get this up here to take a look at it. And we'll watch this to see what we're doing on. And I've got to do something quickly because they're screaming at me. My little uh, price alerts are telling me that things are starting to move. And it's telling me, oh, the euro is starting to move a little bit lower, which we were sort of expecting that to be. But we're, we're going to start to see some really increased volatility, folks. I don't think there's any uh, question of it. The volatility in its excel the it let's try words just a little bit slower the volatility index itself is telling us that there's someone is expecting more volatility because even when the market went up the volatility index would go up and that tells you that people are taking protection against something that might be happening in the future that's really what that means now from my perspective and that's what it's what's that's what it seems to be so we'll watch that very closely uh, we'll have rich anderson on in about uh, know, about six or seven minutes but uh, the key today is to keep an eye on the um stock market because if we close lower uh that tells us that we're most probably getting ready uh, to have a pretty good move down into August 14th, and we'll be able to see it. Another one that looks really interesting from a, um, a short covering rally standpoint, folks, is the Treasury bonds. And uh, we'll get this up here and let you take a look at that in one second. There it is. 
Okay, get up here one second. And uh, yes, when Rich comes on, we will talk about the piggies and uh, we'll see uh, the hogs and we'll see. But the, look at this treasury bond chart, folks. It's got some beautiful cycles. Uh, we're setting at a 78% retracement of the low from May. Uh, we've been down uh, 10 days in a row, which that in itself is uh, very unusual. And it just tells us that there should be some port around that 151 uh, 25 level. And all I am looking for here, folks, is a 382 rally uh, on this. And that would take us up to about uh, about two full handles from where we are right now, about 153.25. That's what I would be looking at. This is an incredibly um, a bearish chart long term because that 157 up there was a 382 retracement on the weekly chart. And now we've come down really hard, so all we're looking now is to see if we can get a little bit of a bounce where we could possibly, you know, put on a really low-risk short position. And I'm watching the the Treasury bonds especially because they have the most uh, – uh, volatility and most bang for the bucks and they have you have good uh, the margin on it is not bad too because you can control you know a hundred and some thousand dollars for not a lot of money and uh, this risk can be narrowed down to about five hundred dollars so that makes it a pretty nice thing we'll be right back in a few minutes with rich anderson eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management on. Rich, are you there? You bet. How you doing, my friend? Uh, buckled my seatbelt, getting ready for an exciting day. Okay, listen, the first question we have is about the live hog market. Any any comments you have? Because you alerted us to that uh, three drive to a bottom pattern uh, last year when they were under the cost of production, and here we're looking at them at a uh, little over 100 bucks. Uh, uh, now, what, what what are you feeling here on the hogs? Well, basically, Larry, they didn't they didn't store any bellies. Mm -hmm. That's that that's the essence of what went on. The the bellies are what's really cranked these hogs up. Number one, and number two, they, they've increased the ca kill capacity. They've uh, a couple of plants have put on a second shift that makes an extra fifty thousand hogs. And then there's two new smaller plants that are are just opening up, um, mm -hmm. and so then you you know you've got more capacity, and these guys you know you got a plant you want to use it, so you're going to bid up to get your hogs to your plant, right? Yep. Are we still uh, importing a lot, exporting a lot of hogs to uh, China, Rich? Well, you know since China owns one of our biggest hog um, integrators. Uh, it, that's just going to be a continuing uh, thing. It's it's not massive yet, you know. It's the the, the loophole. The um, benchmarks you have to jump over as far as uh, ex exporting to China of any meat, whether it be mm -hmm. cattle or hogs, are many. You know, they want them ractifine free. You know, they they are very particular about how they're fed. Um, in the cattle, the, the age is very particular, so it takes time for these uh, producers to change their feeding rations and to qualify to to make things go. Rich, we have a question from one of our listeners about why they don't trade pork bellies anymore. You know, which is the underside of the hog. Uh, what uh, what what That's that was about six or seven six years ago, wasn't it? They stopped trading bellies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, what was the reasoning behind it? I don't know. Um, they're they're just there was just a not enough participation, and mm -hmm. you, you need you need more than a couple of uh, speculators and a handful of of hedgers, and and they just didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And the electronic markets are becoming more and more of a feature, and. You know the electronic markets. I mean, the pit, the pits will completely disappear once the uh, the euro dollar um, goes more than I think. Uh, I think it has to get 80 percent electronic. Then all the pit, pits will disappear. That's the only one that's kind of holding things up. Um, but they're just. Oh. You, you had you had one one of our friends in Chicago that knew where every belly was in the country. I know and, that, yeah. <laughs> and he wrote the contract. So, you know, uh, they're just, it, it was no different than potatoes. You know, they got to be a point where, or eggs, there were just a handful of guys that knew where everything was and had an immense uh, knowledge of where the price was going to go. And so the spectators went to other things. Sure. Yeah, they had those government contracts and eggs that just basically destroyed the, uh, the market that was Milo King, wasn't it? He's the big egg yep. guy that uh, did all that stuff. Yeah, and uh, that's for sure. And paid potatoes. Okay, let's get into one of your specialties here, Minneapolis. Um, this is the um, spring wheat, and uh, we've had one heck of a move. We've rallied about three dollars a bushel, which is fifteen thousand bucks. And uh, <laughs> is this market over, Rich, or what's happening here? I don't uh, think so, but the. the, the saying is you can't kill a crop but once and we've already killed the crop mm -hmm. um so have we now really killed be... it i mean how how bad is it how bad is it well we, we have the usda supply and demand thing that'll come on on wednesday and mm -hmm. the last crop report on june 30th you know they had abandonment of spring wheat at 2.5 percent now when 40 percent of your state's in drought conditions let me guess are we going to have more than 2.5 percent abandonment uh, absolutely. Yes. It's yeah. a, it's a it's a pretty serious problem. And then on top of that, we got the heat that's come in, and uh, you know this is a high pressure ridge. And when you have high pressure ridge, a it gets hot, and b it blocks moisture. Now it's going to rotate 
you know, oscillate, they call it, back to the, the Rockies and give us a chance to get a few showers in, but then it's going to come back for a couple of weeks. And the worry is that it moves all the way into uh, Iowa, you know, goes from, and expands mm-hmm. from the Dakotas and Minnesota and, and Nebraska into Iowa and, and really gets uh, nasty, and that would affect uh, the corn. Mm-hmm. Typically, you don't see the USDA make too big an adjustments in corn in the report on Wednesday, but it'll be interesting to see. The crop conditions report tonight, the, you look at the good to excellent, and poor to very poor, and you're going to see um, good to excellent go down, I expect, and in, in the coming weeks you're mm-hmm. going to see it go down precipitously. It's my expectation. Okay, we left we a gap it. here today, and the interest, yeah. it, look at beans. 11 days ago, they were making 13-month lows. Yeah, and now look I, at them. yeah, look at them now. I know they're making a perfect and, 78% return. And the other return. item that you, you can't get a, it's very hard to get a bull market in soybeans when oil is the leader because when you crush 60 pounds is what a bushel of beans is, you get 48 pounds of meal and 11.8 pounds of oil. But, mm-hmm. you know, with the meal as the leader, you can get a bull market in beans and and back in the old days, we didn't grow many soybeans in North Dakota. 12.4% of the acreage this year is in North Dakota. And then the other reason this temperature is such a big deal is because we got the corn in later rather than early like we have the previous two years. And now we've got the heat during pollination, and it dries out the silks, and then the corn only fills out to, mm-hmm. say, two-thirds of the year, and that's where you really get production changes. Well, we're certain we're certainly seeing the uh, weather market because the market gapped up so much Sunday night. I think we were up 15 cents in beans and 15 cents or so in wheat, and uh, we're all you know what really is amazing here. We're right over this full moon, and that usually means a, uh, a turn in the market. But you know, with the weather market, that can change things for. Wow, quite some time as we remember from old past experiences. Well, what, you what could happen about- there? What could happen there, Larry, is that uh, you know they, every every six hours basically you're getting new satellite readings in, and then you throw it in your computer programs to forecast the weather. So oscillating this ridge back to the west into the Rockies could give some of these uh, bears a chance to you know try this. But the, the funds are short a bunch of stuff, and when you're short a bunch of stuff and you got this kind of heat. That'd be like dancing around on a hot stove to me. Well, that's what it's doing, and it's pretty. And it and the weather uh, has not been as hot as previous years in some parts, but other parts have been uh, pretty dramatic, haven't they? Yes, very much so. Very much so. And what is the forecast for the next week? Is that going to make any effect on this wheat or not? Because of the fact that it's uh, you know doing so strongly. Uh, the forecast for the next two weeks is is for heat to remain. And there's no um, mitigating moisture of any consequence. You know, you'll get a you'll get a, you get a quarter inch rains here and there, but when you got 90 plus degree temperatures, a quarter of an inch doesn't do it. And then the other thing that affects the uh, yield on corn is the biurnal temperature. In other words, how much does it cool off at night? You got to give the plant some relief at night. When it doesn't cool off at night, that affects yield. Okay, stay with us, and we'll be right back with Rich Anderson right. of Anderson Capital Management. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with hosts Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN show and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Trading is different than investing, but the opportunity to take advantage of short-term trends is only one if you get the direction right. Direction leveraged and inverse ETFs offer bold trades on U.S. and international stocks and bonds. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. And one of the questions we're getting from one of our uh, listeners here at TFNN, uh, Rich, is uh, how much do you pay for? I mean, what do, what services? Not, don't want, I don't know how much you pay, but what services do you use for the uh, weather market services? And uh, you know, some of your supply demand uh, folks. Um, could, do you mind sharing that information with us? Uh, well, um, th th there's. You know, I have a, a half a dozen different weather services that um, mm -hmm. um, I, I get information from. I actually have a friend in Detroit that's a private analyst that only does it for a major uh, international bank, and mm -hmm. that's who I get most of my information from, and and that's only for sale to, you know, institutional clients, mm -hmm. you know. But um, just watch the Weather Channel. The Weather Channel is good enough. <laughs> I think so. I mean, and and you know, keep in mind, weather markets. You know, they're, they're yeah. since every six hours they're they're getting a satellite reading thing. I mean, yeah. they're they're tricky. Yeah. They're tricky. Yeah, you so you yeah. you stop. Mm -hmm. These are wild yeah. markets. Yeah. You know. You remember years ago we used to get the teletype things on Reuters about where the anchovies were off the coast of Peru. <laughs> right, right. The, the key Boy, thing to know about weather is that the jet stream determines, in my opinion, as not being a meteorologist, the jet stream kind of determines the temperature, and the ocean temperature kind of determines where you're going to have moist, you know, moisture shortages or not. If it's cold, you don't have as much moisture going into the atmosphere, and thus you're probably going to have some dry situations. But when it's warm. Uh, it's less so because more moisture is being evaporated into the atmosphere to come back down someplace else. So, but, uh, you know, these high-pressure ridges, they set up, and, and then all of a sudden one day they'll be gone, and, you know, the, the market will, you know, you'll see it in the market. Uh, but, yeah, the, the Weather Channel does a pretty good job, frankly. Mm hmm well, it sure does. I mean, I watch, you know, because we get the monsoons here in Tucson, and we're starting to look for those. or are about two weeks late already. And uh, you see the little weather patterns all over the place, and they show you the fires all across the West. You know, it's really uh, it's really incredible. But uh, you remember, oh, I hate to get off the, we should get off the beaten path. Remember when old Ted Turner came out with CNN, and, and everybody said he was going to lose his shirt because no one would watch news, you know, 24 right. hours a day. And, you know, he made a whole lot. Is he still alive? by the way i heard last i heard yeah. he was living up in montana 
he, well, he's, yeah. he, he's one of the largest landowners in the country. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I knew yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. so it, it, he's got a huge amount of acreage in, in Montana, so I wouldn't be yeah. at all surprised. Well, he just you know. completely dropped off the face of the earth as far as public appearances and stuff. It's really, uh, you know, really quite amazing. Well, once he got divorced from Jane Fonda. Oh, he probably didn't have any money left. That's probably right. No, he's, <laughs> hey, he's let's, <laughs> funny. <laughs> hey, let's take a look here uh, at the um, uh, live cattle. We're looking at August cattle here. Uh, we've had one heck of a run in cattle. We backed off. This looks totally different than the hog chart, of course. So right. we got a chance for cattle to rally here. It looks like this is a relatively uh, bullish scenario. Yeah. Um, you know, I thought, I thought they uh, held rather well. And, and bounced last week and closed mid mid range. They test uh, last week's lows and can hold again. Uh, they're probably good, but they you know they've opened lower. What 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 happens, Larry, is when it's this hot and dry. What's going if I'm if I'm a farmer and I can't feed my cows, I'm going to take them to market. Mm -hmm. That's why cattle and feeder cattle are down today. You know. Wow. So uh, and and so all of a sudden you'll have an additional poundage, you know, tonnage of, of meat on the market. And I think that's a little bit what they're worried about. So if we don't hold last week's lows, we're probably going to go revisit the 105 area where I think uh, that's a price level I feel has real value and uh, we'll look to have more of an interest. Right now it's just a trading affair. It's bounced sure. off from support. But, you know, they keep in mind that what's, what's friendly to corn can also, if it gets severe enough, be negative to uh, the cattle and to the feeder cattle in particular. Because okay. every ten cents up in corn reduces the price of feeders by roughly seventy points, if you put it into a formula and break out costs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rich. One other question that someone is asking is, how would you rate this uh, this weather market as some of the others that we've had? I mean, you and I have been involved with them, you know, for many many years. But on a scale of say one to ten, how would you rate this one? Um, you know, as opposed to some of the others. Now, there's two different markets, of course. You've got Minneapolis wheat, and then you've got the corn and beans. How would you rate the corn and beans as far as a weather bull market um, looking at past uh, moves? Right now, I'd say it's a, a four or a five, but if this, mm -hmm. if this high pressure ridge reestablishes and the, and the temperatures move into uh, Iowa and further mm -hmm. east, then all of a sudden it could be up in that seven or eight. Wow. The, the yeah, good that's thing a... is we we started with big stocks, and so it, it, it's mm -hmm. it's not having as much impact as in previous years when we didn't have necessarily large stocks, and then all of a sudden we had a crop problem. Okay, one other question that someone's asking us that's uh, a little off the, off the wall, but it's a good question, and that is, will the China's buying have any effect on beans and meal and oil, uh, you know, given the fact that there might be some trade wars going on? What's, uh, what's the situation from China? Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, they've, you know, you're, you're, with the tweets that go on every day, you're subject to a potential hiccup in trade at in any particular time. Um, but you know, the, there are other parts of the world that are having some weather issues too. And, and the bottom line is that you, you need to feed your people and Xi Jinping's the five year, you know, they're mid, they have a 10 year term and the five year term, they have a con congressional get together, shall we say, you know, they call it mm -hmm. something different that's in September. So they want to keep the people fat and happy until September. Uh, hmm. after that, maybe they can play hardball, but they want to make sure there's plenty of food. And everybody's, you know, happy. Ah, oh, that's good. I think, oh. you know, it's just a personal opinion. That's how I see the political yeah. thing in China. Uh, okay, well, what's your opinion on the, the gold and silver here? I know you have a couple of guys that are big hitters in gold. Um, you think it's got a chance for a bottom in here? Um, well, the, the silver doesn't seem to have any sponsors. And gold is was a de facto currency when interest rates are below zero. As interest rates start to, you know, normalize around the world, uh, there'll be somewhat of a cost to carry. But I think the gold will will find a, a, a storehouse of value uh, someplace on this dip, and and will catch. And then you, you'll need to attract the speculators into into the silver. Keep in mind that you know likelihood that Yellen is not going to be the new chair. She'll want previous chairs have tried to get things back to normal before they left. So that means there probably are two more rate hikes. The, the key thing is if you look at the stock market and you look at the uh, balance sheet of the Fed, you know, and how that bl bloomed up over $4 trillion, if they decide to start taking that down, 
and they can take that down with, you know, there's $400 billion of mortgage-backed securities that they can cut all the time. The 30-year, you know, you have a small, much smaller amount that you can take out, but let's say they decide to take that balance sheet down a third. That, that's just sucking money out that would go into gold, silver, and to the stock market and could make things mm-hmm. very interesting. And that's kind of what they're talking about right now. So it's not the, – the rate increases are inconsequential, in my opinion, compared to the decisions on what to do with the balance sheet and how they take that down. But I believe they'll be doing it with the mortgage-backed securities. Hey, buddy, thanks for joining us, and we'll have you again soon, okay? <laughs> All righty. You trade well. Thanks a lot, Bye-bye. Rich. Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I want to share with you uh, something that occurred here over the weekend. I got an um, email from... Um, someone from Sweden, and he sent me this chart, and he asked me where he should take profits. And I had not heard, I didn't know who this person was or anything like that, and I said, well, you're asking me a question. I only know part of the answers. I said, A, where did you buy it? 
And so he came back a little while later, and he bought it right there on that retracement back in uh, early June at about a buck twenty two, hundred and twenty two. And then the news came out uh, just last week, and the market gapped up about ten uh, percent. And now he's asking, you know, where to take profits. And I said, well, all I can do is to tell you one of the main things that I look at on this painting behind my wall here. It's number two, is when in doubt, get out. And so if you don't have an opinion of a market and you don't know where you are, you know, you're uh, you're in shark-infested waters in the North Atlantic. Um, Amos Hostetter used to have a little uh, little plastic sign uh, on his um, a Quotron machine that said, has your position reached its profit potential? And then you had to check yes or no. And the second question was, has your position changed uh, on whether you think – uh, the market direction is going to be yes or no. And he said, if you could answer yes to either one of those questions, you could take profits. Other than that, you were not supposed to do that. So, you know, the main thing I tried to tell him, I said, you know, look, it's your trade. It's your responsibility. I said, I can give you my opinion, but if it works, you're just going to ask me again, and that's not going to help you at all. So you have to learn to do it yourself because, uh, you know, that you're the one that has to take responsibility for it. So anyway, that's what happened. I don't know what he did, but, uh, you know, when, when you come to a point we have to ask somebody else, uh, you know, it, you're, you're in big trouble. There's no question about it. You got it. You're the one that has to take responsibility for your trades. Uh, oh, one other great human interest story. Uh, Paula Douglas works out of uh, works in. Well, she lives in Palm Springs. She has a very dear friend who owns a um, a, a company that um, sells houses. And uh, well, I'll, I'll tell the story tomorrow. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.